So guys, welcome back to another video. In this one today, we're going to be talking about two pretty good looking cards which came out recently in the Ultimate Scream promo. I am of course talking about Scream Otamendi and Scream William Carvalho. Both of these guys got pretty significant boosts in this promo and that's why I'm interested in trying out both of these items. Anyway, before we get into this video, if you guys could leave a like rating on it, that would be greatly appreciated. In the comment section down below, let me know your thoughts on these items, and also let me know which other players you want me to try out for a video. One more thing before we get into things, I do have to shout out my sponsor, One Football. If you're in the market for a football app, and you need to keep up with the latest football news, then uh, you know what, download the OneFootball app. It is free, it'll keep you up to date with the latest news in football, and it's also got a really good match centre, which can keep you up to date with all the latest live scores. Anyway, let's crack on with this video, shall we? So this is the squad that I'm going to be using these two special items in. It's a, it's a nice Premier League slash La Liga hybrid, and in-game I will be playing the 4 triple 2 formation because it's one of my favourite formations in the game. Anyway, let's have a look, let's have a closer look at this Otamendi item. Now, Otamendi's normal card in FIFA um, doesn't have too much pace. It has 56 pace. The screen version of him has 81 pace, which is absolutely fantastic. So he's been given a plus 24 boost on his pace, and he's also been given a plus 10 boost on his dribbling. So let's have a look at this guy's in-game stats, shall we? Um, defensively, really good stats. He's got 85 interceptions, 83 defensive awareness, 86 stand tackle, and 85 slide tackle. On top of that, he's got decent strength of 83 and really high aggression of 93. So when this guy is in one-on-one -on -one battles with attackers, he should be able to um, fight them off the ball, which is awesome. He's also got 91 jumping and he's six foot. So aerially, in theory, he should be pretty solid. And um, now let's move on to William Carvalho. Let's have a look at his in-game stats. He's six foot two in-game, so he's pretty tall for a CDM. So I'm expecting him to win plenty of aerial battles in midfield. Field, he's actually been given some pretty nice boosts. Now, he, his shooting got upgraded quite a bit, as did his pace. His pace went up by 33, and his shooting went up by 27 when compared to his non inform item. And as you can see in game, he has some really good in game attributes. In that shooting section, we can see this card has 92 attack positioning, 99 shot power, and 81 long shots. So if you wanted to play this guy as a cam, he probably could bang in some good long shots from the edge of the box. He's got some decent passing attributes too. He's got 83 short passing and 87 long passing, so he should be able to distribute the ball to a decent standard. Uh, defensively, 82 stand tackle is okay. 82 defensive awareness isn't too bad either, and 83 interceptions is decent. Physically, really good strength of 94 and really good stamina of 85, so he should be able to defend and sweep up attacks all game long. On paper, both of these cards look pretty freaking good, but um, obviously the game isn't being played on paper, so let's get into some matches and let's test both of these defensive items out to see how they perform in games. So for the debut of our two Scream cards, we come up against a side which features three one-to-watch items, and this guy's team as a whole looks pretty freaking special, so this could be a very tough game. I'm going to need my defensive Scream players to actually be really good in this game to contain my opponent's attack. Here's Carvalho in a bit of an advanced position. Slides the ball through for Aubameyang. And it's going to be a very early assist for William Carvalho. He came forward. He wasn't sat in a defensive position. He came forward, put through a nice through ball. He's got on an assist. And Aubameyang has put us 1-0 up very early on in this match. My opponent's trying to run forward. But Hazard is no match for Carvalho physically. And he just knocks him off the ball with relative ease. Carvalho, once again there, in the right place at the right time, making an interception. The opponent's coming forward now with Usman Dembele on that left edge, whips it into the box, but it's off to Mendy who's there with a nice tame header to just cushion the ball down for Torreira. William Carvalho plays it in for Morales, who goes for the finesse shot. And Sicilian makes a good save. The opponent comes forward with... Um, Griezmann, but Otamendi is wise to it and collects the loose pass. One thing I'm noticing about William Carvalho is he likes to get forward. He's not just sitting back, he likes to push forward. 
So at half time, as you can see, we do indeed have ourselves a 3 nil lead in front of goal. We have just been so much more clinical than my opponent. And also defensively, we've been pretty solid too. Both William Carvalho and Otabendi have been making tackles. And most notably, Carvalho has been making plenty of interceptions too. He does like to get forward, but when he sits back, he does make plenty of interceptions. Positionally, um, when he sits back, he's very good. Gets through on the edge of the box. Chance for my opponent, but Otamendi denies this man Dembele not once but twice. Now, admittedly, I have tried to go on a few runs with William Carvalho, and I have to say his agility is not very good. He's a tough player to dribble with, so um, despite having good shooting stats, he probably isn't the best player to put into an advanced midfielder role. And there's the full-time whistle. So the game actually ends in a 3-2 win for us. Um, in the second half, my opponent came on strong and got uh, two quick fire goals. Um, none of them at the fault of Otamendi or William Carvalho, might I add. As you can see, Carvalho and Otamendi both got decent ratings in this game. Tackles won in this game. Carvalho went two out of three and Otamendi somehow went three out of two, which is um, yeah, pretty incredible. And passing-wise, they were both pretty even, pretty much 90% for both of them, which is awesome. Anyway, let's now move on into game number two and see how these guys do against a different opposition. Okay, next we face this. It is uh, when it loads. It's a Premier League slash La Liga hybrid, which features Rashford, a red foot champs, Ilke Gundogan, and also Eda Militao in the back line. Comes forward with Fekir, but that's a... Nice interception there by William Cavalier, dispossessing the attacker. William Cavalier up against Martial. He actually was struggling with the shoulder to shoulder battle at first, but eventually uh, gathers the ball. What a goal Torreira just scored. Now, I know this video isn't about Lucas Torreira, but what a free kick. In off the bar, pick that one out the net. The chance for my opponent in space with Fakir, but Otamendi sticks to him like glue and eventually wins the ball back. Oh, Tamendi went for the tackle that time, but um, unfortunately, Fekir won it back instantly. Oh, nice. Oh, Tamendi gets his revenge, this time putting um, Fekir on the floor. And there's the half-time whistle. So, at the break, we have ourselves a 1-0 lead, thanks to a fantastic free kick from Lucas Torreira. As you can see, my opponent has had the lion's share of possession, and he's also had more chances than me, but we've defended pretty well. As you can see, putting in 16 tackles, uh, not 16, 9 tackles thus far. I don't know where I got the number 16 from. Anyway, let's get into the second half, and hopefully keep uh, the scoreline similar, because I'd like a clean sheet. Balls up in the air. Otamendi against Rashford. Otamendi wins it just. Rashford tries to open some space, but Otamendi gets the block. Penalty! We've got a penalty with 12 minutes on the clock. Now, who do I take it with? Do I take it with Carvalho or do I take it with Otamendi? I've got to take it with one of them two, right? Let's go with... I mean, I know Carvalho is going to have the better stats, but I kind of want to take it with my centre-back. But since I need to win this game, I'm going to go with Carvalho, who has... 99 shot power and 93 penalties, so hopefully he can uh, tuck this one away. We're going to go just to the left of it, and we're going to score two. 2-0, two heading into the final 10 minutes. Hopefully we've got the win, and hopefully we can uh, go on to keep a clean sheet as well. Oh, nice interception. Oh, well, I thought it was a nice interception from Carvalho, but his first touch let him down. And there uh, we gave back possession to the opponent. But there is the full-time whistle. We've recorded a very nice 2-0 victory. We've got a clean sheet. And I'm happy with that performance overall. As you can see, in the second half, it was like the first. My opponent had a lot of possession. And we had to make plenty of tackles to uh, stop them scoring. Player ratings-wise, um, as you can see, Otamendi and William Carvalho with decent ratings once again. Lucas Torreira actually the man of the match in this game. But that's probably because he was involved in that first goal. So now you've seen these guys in action, let's get onto the summary page and let's summarise both of these defensive players. So after playing around with these guys a bit more, what are my thoughts on them? Well first it's worth noting that we played 5 games in weekend league, we won 4 and we lost 1. We kept 2 clean sheets in those 5 games. Anyway, let's break these guys down. Let's first talk about William Carvalho. I actually thought he was really solid as a CDM, however he does like to shoot out of line and this Carvalho does shoot forward quite a bit and that's probably down to his very high attack positioning stats. So if you're going to use this guy, I really do advise using the stay back while attacking instruction or you will find Carvalho shooting forward to help out with attacks. In game, um, he's, it obviously does take him a bit of time to get to his max speed but once he gets to his max speed he does feel 
pretty quick when tracking back. His passing in game I thought was pretty good. Um, he distributes quite well from deep, which is obviously a positive. On the ball, um, the guy turns like a truck. This guy's dribbling does not feel that great, and that is obviously down to his low agility, so... Yeah, don't go on runs with this guy. Defensively though, he is pretty solid. His tackling ability isn't the best, but he's one of them players that's so strong, they just knock people off the ball with relative ease. Aerially, he wasn't too bad either. Overall, as a CDM, I thought he was very freaking solid, and I'd definitely use him again. And he's only like 70k, and that's a really good price for this card. So if you can afford to, I do recommend trying out William Carvalho because he's very freaking good. But if you're going to use him as a DM, like I've said, use the stay back while attacking instruction on him. Or you might have problems with him shooting out of line and opening up gaps in your defence. Okay, now let's chat about Scream Otamendi. This guy was really good in game. I liked him. I liked him a lot. Defensively, he was great. He made plenty of interceptions and his tackling ability is very good too. He's one of them defenders who are not too bad with the ball at their feet either. He just feels composed in possession and his passing for a centre back is decent too. Positionally, he's great. The guy just sits and defends and that's exactly what you want from a centre back. In game, as you can imagine, with him having 80 pace, he is pretty quick. Not too many attackers are going to break away from this card. Otamendi's got decent strength, and with that combined with his high aggression, he's very good in one on one situations. For the most part, like I've said, I thought Otamendi was brilliant. The only thing that wasn't amazing about this card for me was the aerial ability. When compared to other top tier centre backs in the air, he's just not as strong as them. Overall, though, this Otamendi is class, and in my opinion, it's probably the best, no, no, sorry, the second best Premier League centre back item in the game, behind Van Dyke, of course. So, with all that in mind, is this item worth picking up? Um, I would like to say yes. I would like to say 100% yes, but the Premier League does have some really good centre backs that are much cheaper. Davison Sanchez comes to mind. Um, the guy is a beast in game, and he's only like 20 or 30k. Now, Scream Off to Mendy is better than non-informed Sanchez, but is he 10 times the price better? Probably not. So although this Otamendi card is absolutely brilliant, the value for money isn't fantastic. Nonetheless, if you can afford to try Otamendi, I do think it's worth doing so. Oh, and by the way, if you put a Shadow Chem style on Otamendi, um, he's got 92 pace. Now that's scary. Anyway guys, you've just heard my thoughts on both the Ultimate Scream Otamendi and the William Carr value. I hope you found this video useful, I hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, do remember to leave a like rating on it in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on these cards, also let me know if you've got any questions about them. And one more thing, let me know if you want me to review any of the other Scream players. Guys, thank you very much for watching and as always, I'll catch you in the next one.